Hello and welcome to Roanoke Hobby and Electronics. In this video we're going to look at a project where I make a simple uh, keyboard and we're going to look at the code and we're going to use arrays and loops to make the code more efficient. So uh, so on the blog I will um, I will list the link to the original project that I found and um, we're going to look at the uh, the original code, and uh, you can you can look at the site um, and look at the wiring diagram to see more details on how uh, how the breadboard is wired. But we're going to look at the uh, the sketch uh, line by line and kind of explain uh, how it's working, and then we're going to take that uh, same uh, program and make it more efficient by using arrays and loops uh, to uh, make it more efficient and um, do the same function in uh, fewer lines of code. So let's, uh, let's take a look here at the, at the finished project and like I said you can go to the original site and see the uh, wiring diagram but um, what I've done different from um, the original. Uh, they just had a wire going from the positive rail going to the speaker and I thought well why don't we just add an LED there instead of a wire uh, so we actually have some visual feedback when the button is pressed. So uh, what I did then was take the uh, positive leg of the LED, put that in the uh, in the positive rail here on the breadboard going up that goes to the switch. Uh, we've got uh, resistors um, then that will help control the flow uh, through the circuit to kind of not only protect the LEDs but also protect the uh, pins going going to the board. So basically what happens is when you press the button the current will be allowed to flow if the contacts are closed uh, current will flow through the LEDs and then also flow to the input pin on the board and then we're going to look at the code that we're going to create a sound uh, based on which pin um, is get receiving the current so each button will make a different sound And um, I'm sure the tones are approximations. Um, they're, it's, it's supposed to be from C to C. Um, but uh, like I said, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple uh, sketch. So it's probably not going to be acoustically perfect. But it will give you a good idea on how, how uh, this is done. Alright, so we'll switch here to the code and um, this is the original and um, I've given uh, the link here and I'm also going to post that on the blog. So we'll start off, um, they have uh, created uh, variables so we can uh, define which pin number we're going to use for the buttons and we're going to C, D, E, F, G, A, B and then C, uh, the higher C and then the speaker is going to be on pin 13 and then um, he's created then variables for a button state for each button and initialized it to be zero and um, then he has used an array here to uh, contain the numerical values that's going to define the frequency for each of the tones. Now we'll go into a little bit more detail exactly what this means 
but it's just going to be in this array one value for each button and then created the um, variable for current tone and initialized it to zero so then we go into the setup section of the sketch and then he's going to use um, the pin mode command here to set each of the buttons the pins for each button to input and then the pin mode for the speaker is going to be output and then we'll move down here to the loop and then basically at the loop section just repeats over and over again at the speed that the CPU is clocked at so um, the the clock speed on the board is 16 megahertz so it's 16 million times per second so it's just using the digital read command to to see what the state of the button is and that's where he's using this variable button state for each button and uh, then the first if statement here is if the button state is high in other words the button has is being pressed so current is flowing to the button and the pin state is high because current is present and then the next uh, set of if statements then for each button then is that if the button state is high then the current tone is going to be a value from that tones array so tone 0 tones 1 tones 2 and we'll look at the, a little more detail um, the arrays then are the position in the array starts at 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 for a total of eight values and that's going to be important to keep in mind then when um, we're going to use a loop in the next sketch uh, we need to know how many values are going to be in the array but uh, once once you start programming you get used to the fact that the arrays start the first position is zero so it's a zero based uh, numbering system so we scroll back down here so um, he goes through a series of if statements uh, when each button state is high then set the current tone to that value in the array and then so here's how the sound is being made like I said now this is repeating over and over very quickly so the tone is created then we're actually going to digital write we're going to send current to the speaker by setting it to high we're going to wait the number of microseconds that is in the current tone uh, variable and then we're going to set the speaker to low and wait the number of microseconds and while the button is being pressed this is going to repeat very very quickly so the number of microseconds we wait between the high and low that we're pulsing to the speaker then that creates the frequency and we get a different tone uh, based on the number of microseconds that we're wait waiting and then um, with if statements uh, you can also then at the end have an else so if it if none of the if statements are true else what we're going to do then is set the speaker to low so when a button is not being pressed there's not going to be any sound uh, so that's what this last part of the the last line here is for is just to set the speaker to zero or low uh, so no sound and as you can see this sketch then uh, has 94 lines and is perfectly functional and it's actually very good as, as a learning tool because it's a very explicitly uh, stepping through exactly what is happening line by line but what we're going to do then is um, I took this and I optimized it and for the um, sake of uh, kind of showing a demonstration of how to use uh, loops and arrays to make the code uh, more efficient and run in fewer lines so I've created another sketch here and I've given credit to the original um, that this is based on and I'm going to uh, create some variables just like the other sketch the speaker is going to be on pin 13 
but instead of doing eight individual lines then um, I'm just going to create an array here called button pins and then we're going to put those buttons in the the order that we need them to be this is going to be position 0, 1, 2, etc. and then the same array that was in the other um, sketch uh, with the frequencies and then the each position in the array is going to correspond so pin number two is going to be that frequency pin number three is going to be this frequency four five etc and then a variable called play note and I'm going to initialize it as being zero and button state very similar to the other sketch and uh, set it to zero so we get here a little further into the sketch and the setup then instead of doing eight individual lines to set the pin mode we're going to use our first uh, for loop and uh, like I said earlier uh, it will be important to know how many um, values are in the an array and we know there's eight values so a for loop then is going to repeat the command uh, based on the um, the counter here that we're creating so uh, we have a variable x we're going to start with zero as long as x is less than eight we're going to run this command and then we're going to add one to the counter our x variable and then so the first time through x will be zero so button pin zero will be input we're going to it's less than eight so it's going to repeat so then pin mode button pins one will be input etc and so that's going to loop and set the pin mode then for each for each button and then there's only one speaker so we're just going to go pin mode speaker is going to be output and I'm going to uh, digital write we're going to write the value to speaker and here in the setup I'm going to set it to low uh, just to initialize the speaker uh, to be in no sound so then as we scroll through um, here we go into the loop section again of the sketch and again it's going to repeat this loop uh, at the speed that the, the CPU is running and so instead of having individual lines for the button state we're going to do another uh, for loop just like before we're going to start with position 0 and we're going to use this variable button state and we're going to do digital read so we're going to read the um, state of button pin 0 will be the first time through if button state is high in other words the buttons being pressed and current is present then play note is going to be tones 0 this like I said this is the first time through so it's going to be pin 0 button pin 0 is going to be tone 0 and then we're going to repeat this uh, high low waiting the number of six milliseconds and that gives us that particular tone and then this is going to repeat eight times it's going to check the state of the bin, of the buttons and then play a note comporting, uh, according to the frequency that, that's being st stored in the tones array and just like uh, before um, if none of these are high then else then digital right speaker low so if no button pressed uh, there will be no sound and um, as you can see um, then this now is optimized and the exact same functionality is being performed in just 34 lines and it makes it more efficient as it is running through it's got to go through fewer lines of code to do the, the same task so that so that's this project and um, I think it's a good example of um, arrays and loops a practical example and um, so if uh, you found the video to be uh, useful and informative uh, like us on uh, YouTube give us a thumbs up 
and uh, stop by the blog at roanokehobby.info where we'll be posting uh, more projects as we go. And um, on the blog we do have an online shop where we have some Arduino compatible boards and some Raspberry Pi boards and accessories. So if you visit uh, the month of March, this is March 2016, uh, you can use the discount code MARCHYOUTUBE10 to get 10% off um, any purchase you make on the blog this month. So thanks again for watching and uh, come back again and uh, as we get some more videos and do some more interesting projects.